My name is uh, Riyad Salem. I'm Chief of Interventional Radiology at Northwestern University in Chicago. It's my pleasure to present the uh, results of our uh, premier clinical trial for the Gastroenterology Edition, December 2016. The premier clinical trial is a randomized study comparing radioembolization and chemoembolization in a randomized phase two setting. The rationale, of course, is that there are insufficient data and uh, inadequate uh, level of evidence looking and comparing at these two modalities. Chemoembolization, lipidol based, is the standard of care, and radioembolization certainly has uh, become an extremely uh, attractive option for many patients with hepatocellular carcinoma. Patients with BCLCA that were unablatable or unresectable or uh, unamenable to their, to their curative therapy, and also BCLCB patients, were uh, enrolled in the clinical trial. We identified 179 patients over a six year period that we reviewed in our tumor board. And again, these are BCLCA patients who, by the stage migration concept, moved to BCLCB uh, treatment modality like chemoembolization. And 179 patients uh, were uh, discussed in terms of possible uh, clinical trial enrollment. Of the 179 patients, only 45 uh, agreed to the randomization. This is because of competing clinical trials with systemic therapies, patients really requesting one treatment uh, over another. Some patients want radioembolization, some patients want chemoembolization, and other patients really refuse to let uh, the randomization process uh, decide their treatment modality. Again, 45 patients over a six-year period were, uh, ran were enrolled and randomized, and um, after a six-year period of difficult enrollment, the clinical study was terminated at the request of the uh, DSMB. We then, uh, as a result, uh, identified and assigned two blinded readers to assess the result. This was a randomized phase two, and TTP was the endpoint. We had two blinded readers review uh, the uh, data, and uh, the data were, in fact, positive. If you look at the uh, manuscript and baseline characteristics, we had 24 patients in the Y90 group and 21 patients in the chemoembolization group. A few things to highlight in the baseline characteristics table. First, the use of the ALBI score is something that is gaining in popularity and that we implemented for this clinical trial. Second is the highlighting of baseline characteristics such as child pew score at randomization, but also at the time of treatment. And clearly you can see that these are cirrhotic patients that are sick that fluctuate in child pew score. And you could clearly see that the Y90 group was in fact sicker at treatment than they were at the enrollment, as you could see from the fluctuating child pew score, uh, again, at randomization and at treatment. If you look at the results, uh, again, this is a randomized phase two study, so figure one demonstrates the time to progression, which shows a significantly improved time to progression with the, in the Y90 group compared to chemoembolization, with the TTP being over 26 months for radioembolization and 6.8 months in the chemoembolization group. Now, uh, one of the difficulties with this clinical trial is dependent censoring because many patients uh, never re reach their endpoint and they become uh, transplant candidates and potentially get transplanted. So as a result, we were able to reinforce our findings of improvement of TTP in Y90 compared to chemoembolization by using competing risk analysis and inverse probability censoring weighted analysis, all of which deal with dependent censoring. If you look at figure three, overall survival was no different, but this was not a clinical trial looking at overall survival. And again, there's an element of dependent censoring because many of these patients uh, being at our transplant center are always evaluated for potential transplant candidacy. However, even at looking at patients that never ended up making it to transplantation, again, radioembolization far outperformed chemoembolization. If you look at the hazard ratio, uh, by again, all of the statistical tools, there's almost a 90% risk reduction of progression in the Y90 group compared to chemoembolization. So again, by competing risk by Kaplan-Meier and by inverse probability censored weighting analysis, uh, Y90 outperforms uh, chemoembolization. We performed a post hoc power analysis uh, which was 97%. And I encourage you to review the manuscript because, again, it shows that the power of the study is quite high given significantly um, dramatic response and dr dramatic improvement in, in uh, uh, risk reduction of uh, progression in the radioembolization group compared to chemoembolization. In terms of looking at other standards of care in other clinical trials, it is possible that our chemoembolization TTP is not within standards, but if you look at the KUDO manuscript and the SPACE clinical trial, TTP and chemoembolization ranges from five to seven months, and, as a, and our control group is exactly there. Furthermore, the time to progression of 26 months in this prospective randomized clinical trial uh, mimics the VUSH manuscript in hepatology, uh, looking at TTP, 
in uh, unresectable solitary HCC, which was at 33 months. So now we have prospective validation of a very long time to progression in selected uh, patients treated with radioembolization. To conclude, this is the first clinical trial of a real-life clinical patient population randomizing two uh, uh, therapies with Y90 really emerging very quickly as one of the standards of care. It concludes that Y90 far outperforms chemoembolization in patients uh, with uh, unresectable HCC, and we have now adopted this as our standard of care at our institution, and certainly in patients that are being bridged to liver transplantation. Uh, we know now that uh, the ability to control disease is one of the prerequisites for being listed for liver transplantation, and with such a dramatic improvement in TTP in the Y90 group compared to chemoembolization, Y90 has now become uh, our standard of care in the bridging patient population, and we are now continuing to study it in other patient population. I would encourage you to review this manuscript. Thank you.